fourth icon is Heckel's embryo drawings, uh, which purport to show that vertebrates are very similar as early embryos, and therefore this provides evidence for common ancestry. But in fact, the embryos are not similar, and Heckel faked the drawings. The icons of evolution, these are examples uh, of textbook evidences that have taken on a life of their own. They go far beyond the truth, far beyond the facts, and have become symbols, in effect, of uh, Darwin's theory, symbols that actually distort the scientific evidence. In many cases, they're called icons by Darwinian biologists themselves. Ernst Teckel was a, a German biologist and artist, a contemporary of uh, Darwin's, who, uh, among other things, made some famous drawings of vertebrate embryos, uh, fish, humans, salamanders, chicks, turtles, and so on. And in those drawings, Heckel tried to show that all these different vertebrates look very much the same as early embryos. Their early similarities showed that they came from a common ancestor, and differences arose only later. The problem is that he faked his drawings. The problem is that he faked his drawings. The early vertebrate embryos don't really look that similar at all. The problem with Heckel's drawings wasn't just that they were inaccurate, they were actually false in many cases. Uh, but the real damage was done when these drawings entered into biology textbooks decades ago and they've never really been taken out. If you open a high school biology text now or even a college biology text, you'll find these drawings, although they may not refer to them as Heckel's drawings, and in fact, they trace their ancestry directly to Heckel. You see the pictures of the embryos. And it's what really kind of damaged our understanding of, of development and our understanding of biology in general. It's clear that, that Haeckel may have fudged his drawings somewhat to look more like his ideal than they actually are. Now, does that actually take away from what we know about the relationship of embryology to evolution? Not a bit. The whole Heckel's embryo story has been greatly blown out of significance. Uh, it is a minor footnote in the history of science. And actually, it's been known for 10 or 15 years that Heckel's embryos are not to be relied upon. The reason why the diagrams are reproduced is because they're um, easily available. Uh, there's no copyright on them. It's a, an easy way to, uh, to illustrate a point. And I would argue that the basic point that's being illustrated by those drawings is still accurate. But if you go back earlier in development, the different classes of vertebrates look even more different. According to Wells, Haeckel, in many modern textbooks, misleads students not just because of fake drawings, but because they leave out the earliest stages of embryonic development. What students are shown as the first stage of embryonic development is actually the mid-stage. And very few textbooks show those earliest stages, and yet that's the whole point. It's the earliest stages that are supposed to be the most similar, and they're not. Some textbooks actually use photographs of embryos, but they pick only that stage and those classes that happen to look most similar. And they omit the earlier stages, and they omit those classes that don't look similar. So that, to me, is... Uh, picking the evidence very carefully to support the theory, and that's not good science. Wells is a critic of Darwin's theory, but even staunch evolutionists like Harvard's Stephen Jay Gould have criticized the use of diagrams based on Hegel in textbooks. Stephen Jay Gould wrote an article for Natural History saying that we need to let go of, this, of these drawings, that uh, basically that they're not needed. But when DeHart requested permission to let students read Gold's article, that request was turned down too. 
Why does Mr. DeHart feel so strongly to have these articles read? Well, it's because he wants to call into question the whole issue of whether evolution happened. I don't think this is good science education for the students in that district, and apparently neither did his colleagues nor his superintendent. We have a science curriculum. We have a mainstream science theory called evolution. Our job is to teach the adopted curriculum, and that's what we follow. But just how important are Haeckel's embryos? And does a single textbook mistake even matter? If Haeckel's embryo drawings were the only problem with biology textbooks, I would agree that this is an isolated error. The problem is that it's not the only problem. In fact, says Wills, today's textbooks are filled with outdated examples for evolution, which many evolutionary biologists no longer consider good science. Freedom is what makes this country great. Freedom has allowed us to create, to explore, to overcome every challenge we have faced as a nation. But imagine if these freedoms were taken away. Where would we be? What would we lose? Well, unfortunately, I no longer need to imagine. It's happening. We are losing our freedom in one of the most important sectors of society, science. I have always assumed that scientists were free to ask any question, to pursue any line of inquiry without fear of reprisal. But recently, I have been alarmed to discover that this is not the case. It all began when I met evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg in Washington, D.C. His life was nearly ruined when he strayed from the party line while serving as editor of a scientific journal affiliated with the prestigious Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Your office was over there? That's correct. This here is the West Wing. Directly ahead of us is the West Wing of the Natural History Museum. So now you're not there anymore because you're a bad boy. No, I'm not. No, I was, I was exiled. You're a bad boy. You question the powers that be. What was Dr. Sternberg's crime? He dared to publish an article by Dr. Stephen Meyer, one of the leading lights of the intelligent design movement. The paper ignited a firestorm of controversy merely because it suggested intelligent design might be able to explain how life began. As a result, Dr. Sternberg lost his office, his political and religious beliefs were investigated, and he was pressured to resign. The questioning of Darwinism was was a, a bridge too far for many. The mentioning of intelligent design that occurs at the end of the paper was, was over the top. And I think the intelligent design proponents have raised a number of very important questions. And you wanted to get those questions brought up and discussed? Placed on, placed on the table. Placed on the table. People were so upset about it. They were so upset that you could see their, they had a physical emotional reaction. Wow. They were saying that Stephen C. Meyer is a well-known Christian, that Stephen C. Meyer is an intelligent design proponent, that Stephen C. Meyer is a Republican. It was all couched in terms of religion, politics, and sociology. The way the chair of the department um, uh, put it is that I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. Terrorist? Because of giving the topic of intelligent design some modicum of credibility. <laughs>